Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Mittens and welcome back to another episode of the Nostalgia's playthrough on our Rogue Malevolous. So I messed this one up a little bit. I uh, recorded a 30 minute video of doing Scarlet Monster Cathedral finally after so much hype and uh, muted both the sound of the game and my microphone. And it's kind of a shame because for once I was talking about a lot of uh, a lot of plans my opinions of the server, I talked about other games that I've been playing at the moment and you know what I look to do in the future and uh, it's all gone apart from the actual video footage so consider this to be a kind of um, an edited trimmed down version where I probably it'll probably end up being better because I won't talk so much shit but anyway yeah this is the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral video I've promised for a long time I <laughs> I didn't mention this when I recorded it, but it turns out in order to get this group I had to run the armory and then the cathedral. There was like a condition that the group set was that in order to do Scarlet Monastery, two of them wanted to do armory first. And seeing as I'd already tried another day a few days ago to um, get a group for the cathedral and had been unsuccessful, I thought it was probably a good idea to, you know, just go along with what they said, run armory and then run cathedral. I didn't realise that Armoury is actually a really dull dungeon, to be honest. It's probably because I've run it three times now on Nostalrius, but I really think that the Armoury is quite a dull dungeon, up until when you fight Herod, which is quite interesting. Because all you do is run through corridors, killing packs of mobs that are usually well armoured and therefore take ages to kill. The Cathedral, on the other hand, is a really interesting dungeon, and... I found it quite nice because this is the first time I've done the cathedral since when it was changed years ago in the retail game. I had never done the cathedral on another private server and I only realised at this point when I'm on, on the kind of grassy area in the gardens with the fountain how much I kind of miss the old architecture and the old theme of the Scarlet Crusade because it is a really kind of nice concept that they went with and it would have made a good Halloween video because uh, at night time, because obviously the dungeons respond to the day-night cycle of the game, at night time this place has a very eerie look, which is obviously the feel that they intentionally went for, what with it being the um, Tirisfall Glades dungeon zone. So I quite enjoy myself really when I was running through this instance. It was a nice group and uh, everything went quite smoothly in all honesty, apart from having to run the armory as well as the cathedral. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I realised that this was a dungeon that I completely... I'd forgotten about some of the elements which made it seem quite vanilla-y, like the difference in textures, some of the design differences, and the art style, and you know, plus the style of the group and the way you had to handle it was very vanilla. Much like the other Scarlet Monastery dungeons I've done, uh, it was a case of having to manage packs and stuff like that. I mean, let's be honest, we play this game, we play the server for the experience that we used to have. Nobody's claiming that it's kind of more, well, I don't think you would be right to claim that it's more kind of deep in terms of the combat than it was, uh, than, than it is now in retail. It's certainly not, but it's nice all the same to like feel like you have to target mobs as you can see right now and have to do a bit of, a little bit of uh, thought and a bit of tactical skill when you play with it. Plus, the good thing about Nostalgia, and maybe this is just me saying as an experienced player of WoW, it's nice to play the game and know that you're probably going to play alongside good, skilled players who've been playing the game for years and who know a lot about the game and appreciate it, you know? Although that being said, I still occasionally get people who uh, ask me quite uh, interesting questions like how do I get to Orgrimmar from Brill and stuff like that, which makes me, I don't know, at first I think, why are you playing Nostalrius? And then I think to myself, well, a lot of people probably, A, like the fact that it's free, but let's not talk about that because that's the scummy reason, but uh like the fact that it, it's harking back to the game that people brag about so often as being in its best state. So it's nice to see that there's a range of players going right from the uh, the skilled ones who are who were doing raiding and who've been raiding since like, the first couple of weeks that the server came out, right up until um, the the players who were, who may not have even played WoW before or who may have barely played World of Warcraft. It's nice to see that strata of players because it kind of is a bit more reminiscent of what the game would have been actually like on launch. You know, it's a shame that you're uh, missing out on the long, on the longer video I, I recorded because uh, I was talking about a few things. For example, I'll, I'll mention a few right now. I happened to talk about uh, Legion, the uh, the new WoW expansion coming out because 
somebody had asked me if I'd uh, if I was thinking of playing it, and I hadn't thought about it. In all honesty, I completely put the expansion from my mind, which was surprising for a start because I seem to almost always remember when a WoW expansion is coming out. I seem to always have it on my mind massively. I know when Wars of Draenor came out, or before it was coming out, I had no intention of coming back to WoW, but that ex uh, that, that trailer really made me think. Well, perhaps this will be. A return not just to the characters that we love but maybe the mechanics and the the difficulty rating and the challenge that we appreciate in this as an MMO so uh, I'll give my brief answer it'll be the shortened version of uh, what I think about Legion well I was struck instantly by the trailer as in my opinion not being as moving as stirring as as interesting to me as Wad and that's not because I'm a horde player and Wad featured orcs but it's because, you know, I don't particularly find the big battle sequences to be that interesting. Like, if I think about my favourite moments from the, the WoW trailers over the years, it's been all of Wrath of the Lich King and that bit in the Burning Crusade with Illidan. Because that's what I like about the trailers, being blown away by these badass characters that we're either going to fight against or fight with. And that's what I really appreciate about uh, Blizzard's trailers, really, and I really got that from, from Wad. Even though Varian and Sylvanas are in Legion trailer, I didn't really find it too moving to be honest obviously it was to an extent all blizzard trailers are fantastic but it didn't really move me too much and that's maybe a good explanation for how i feel about the expansion i think it's a case of me realizing at this point that when i go back for wow i'm going back for a taste mainly of things that i've gone and a taste of a style of game that has changed i used to rage during cataclysm and mr pandaria about how World of Warcraft had modernized and I thought that that was a bad thing. To an extent, I still do think it's a bad thing. I think that what makes people like WoW and what makes people come to servers like Nostalrius is because they appreciate not necessarily the old, oldness of the game, but the kind of the way they handle difficulty, gearing, getting your loot, that sort of stuff compared to now. I don't see WoW returning to that because it's modernized to, to to meet a new player base, a player base for 2015, 2016, where more people play games, where more people are casual, you know? Back in 2004, 2005, the sort of people who played World of Warcraft and raided were a kind of a subculture. They were a small minority of, of, of people who really enjoyed being the ones who put in that hardcore out of time. And they still exist in WoW, but they're no longer the ones that Blizzard are creating content for. And in a sense, you can argue that that's rightly so. So uh, to, that's my brief explanation. I don't really think I'll play Legion. I might return to it, but if I do, it'll only be because I get dragged back to it by my friends. But, uh, and, and, and maybe to try it out and make a few videos and see if things improve. In all honesty, my biggest draw to a, any MMO are two things. First of all, the quality of the community. And secondly, the quality of the high-end PvE experience. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Wildstar recently, and I hope that the kind of the, the optimistic view that it's starting to regain some uh, population and that people are starting to play it again is true because I really like that game. It feels to me like a polished WoW with a lot of improvements that I would have expected from WoW and from what I've heard about the raiding, it's some of the best that's ever been in a game. So I'm uh, really looking forward to playing some more of that and I'll maybe get some videos of Wildstar up. I'd really encourage anyone to play it, especially if you like vanilla WoW. It's also free to play, which is fantastic. Um, another thing that I talked about and that I'm going to talk about just now is uh, my plans for Corecraft. Because I'd always said, I think I've mentioned it in a few videos now, that I was going to do a Corecraft series. And I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. I happened to look on their uh, site a couple of days ago for the first time in a few months. And I think that we can expect Corecraft to come out within the next six months or so, maybe a bit longer, but I wouldn't expect it to be much longer than that. And uh, I think that that would be a great thing to go on to, because by then I'll have played Nostalries a lot and, and hopefully scratch my vanilla itch to a great extent. And it will feel like the natural progression from a vanilla server onto a well-hyped and hopefully well-delivering Burning Crusade server. And I hope Carcraft will deliver, and I think it will deliver. And I, I happen to make a, I think I'll make a video on what I expect from Carcraft and what I hope it will deliver. I also want to make a video talking about why Nostalrius has been so successful. I think at this point I consider myself almost like a scholar of, of World of Warcraft and what makes it successful and what causes people to leave. And I do find it interesting that Nostalrius has been as successful as it has, and it has really been successful, you know? Uh, if you compare this to other vanilla uh, servers that are out, or the servers I've played on in the past over the last two or three years, 
I would never have expected this kind of community. And in fact, I would never have played on the Stauris if I hadn't logged in on my uh, character at the start to, to kind of test it out and see that there were 50 plus people running around the starting zone. Because like I said, the two things that I appreciate in an MMO are the community and the PvE experience. And the Stauris seems to have both in, in swathes. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a bit about Nostalrius in the video, I'll talk about Corecraft, and as I've said, I plan to play Corecraft, and I might do some Wildstar stuff. So yeah, that uh, is me packing in as much as I can about, the, uh, <laughs> about my plans for the future when it comes to MMOs anyway. I really wanted to include this footage of killing Fairbanks, because I always remember when I first came to the Scarlet Monastery, uh, when I opened the little do secret door to his room, being absolutely blown away. I'd never seen something like that in an MMO before, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, yeah, here we are, kind of pursuing the, the Sword of Omen. I think we're about to uh, take on Mogrim, which is going to be fantastic. Oh yeah, I should probably talk a little bit about the gold situation, seeing as I'm level 40 now and you can expect me to be getting my mount. Yeah, um, somebody asked me if I had a plan. Um, I did have a plan. The plan was based on something I'd read, whereby you could run Scout Monster Graveyard around level 40. And pretty much kill everything and get some good loot and sell it and just rerun that over and over again. But uh, having tried that a little bit earlier, it didn't really work out. It might be different now that I've got the Sword of Omen. But um, yeah, I don't particularly have anything in mind. It's probably going to have to be a combination of crafting, questing and stuff like that. I wouldn't expect myself to get a mount anytime soon. Um, I've never been good with gold in WoW. I've never been... Whilst I'm, I'm good at things like PvE, I've never really been good at kind of making money in WoW. I've never had as m much as my friends. I've never been good at kind of hoarding loads and then the expansions with hundreds of thousands of gold. I've never been like that. Um, and plus, when you're doing like a let's play, it's kind of difficult to amass gold because I usually play to kind of record stuff. And because I amass to make videos, I, I kind of, I, I feel like that should be my number one goal. I don't really log on to farm gold, because by the time I'm done farming gold for a day, I really don't want to play. <laughs> it's that kind of situation. So, um, yeah, don't expect me to get my mount anytime soon. I'm sorry if that disappoints people, but, yeah. And, and also, like, I know there will be some people who are going to think about offering me gold. Please don't. I really do appreciate the sentiment. I think it's fantastic that you do that. But um, I'm kind of playing this for my own experience as well as for the let's play, you know. And whilst I really, really love it when people kind of mention that they like have seen my videos and stuff, I don't really like receiving gifts because I feel like it kind of ruins the experience, especially in a game where it's all about acquiring items and stuff like that. So here we are, about to kill White Mane. Finished her off. Uh, the Shaven earlier on had said that uh, we didn't need to worry about him being a lower level than the rest of us because he was going to stop. Um, White Mane from resurrecting Mograin, and he was correct, so well done to you. I can't remember your name, but that was because it was a very strange name, it was like Wilgastrum or something like that. But here we are, about to hand in the quest to the old Barimathras, a man who I miss very much. Not too many demons on our side anymore, sadly. Here we are, we get to um, hand in the quest and get the Sword of Omen, which has been kind of like the weapon that we've been looking at for so long. It is like the Sword of Destiny. So yeah, uh, I think they will equip it, and it does look as good as that icon suggests. And it just feels nice, it's such an upgrade from what I had currently. So um, I'm going to put the sword on, I'm going to put the dagger into my kind of offhand slot, and you'll get to have a little quick look at it. So uh, here we are, Sword of Omen in hand, level 40 attained, with two thirds through the playthrough. I hope you enjoyed this, stay tuned for more Nostalgias. My name is Mittens, I'll see you later. Oh yeah, and feel free to commend me and congratulate me for my uh, my skills, both in the dungeon and with commentary when I fuck up. <laughs> Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next episode of whatever I make. Bye bye.